and shame us clean. <clears throat> if I can find it. I think it's that one. And um, I'm, I'm continuing from last week where we spoke about marriage and especially the role of the husband and the role of the wife and what it means. And still today, after so many years, it's still a mystery. Where's my wife? She's not there. She's here. It's still a mystery. But let's, let's continue and read together from, I'm going to read the whole portion so that we have the, the full picture and the idea. But I want to focus this morning specifically on family, not just the husband and wife, but family. So let's read from verse 22. And it says, Wives, submit to your husbands as to the Lord, for the husband is the head of the wife, even as Christ is head of the church his body, and is himself its savior. Now, as the church submits to Christ, so also wives should submit in everything to their, to their husbands. Husbands, love your wives as Christ loved the church and gave himself up for her, that he might sanctify her, having cleansed her by the washing of, the word, uh, of, the wa of water with the word, so that he might present the church to himself in splendor, without spot or wrinkle, or any such thing that she might be holy and without blemish. In the same way, husbands should love their wives as their own bodies. He who loves his wife loves himself. For no one ever hated his own flesh, but nourishes and cherishes it, just as Christ does the church, because we are members of his body. Verse 31, therefore a man shall leave his father and mother and hold fast to his wife, and the two shall become one flesh. Now, I, I didn't preach on this verse, but I see so many times that man still cleaves more to his mother than to his wife. So it's a problem saying that. Verse 32, this mystery is profound, and I'm saying that it refers to Christ and the church. However, let each one of you love his wife as himself. Let the wife see that she respects her husband. And we're going to chapter 6. And I'm going to read the first four verses. Now, this is for the children. Attention. A cake for Ella. Okay. <laughs> Verse 1. Children, obey your parents. In the, um, parents in the Lord. For this is right. Honor your father and mother. This is the first commandment with, with a promise that it may go well with you and that you may live long in the land. Fathers, do not provoke your children to anger, but bring them up in the discipline and instruction of the Lord. Let's just pray. Father, we thank you for your precious word. We humbly come this morning and we submit our lives to you, to the word and to your will for our lives. I pray this morning that you'll speak to each one of us as many families here are uh, represented. May you just touch our hearts, speak to each family so that we know your plan and your design for each one of us. We ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. Family, that's what I want to talk about. Family, I believe is God's design. Family is the heart of society. It's the building blocks of society. Without families, society will crumble. Well, family as God designed it. It is the place where you can feel or you can have security. Family is the place where you can feel safe. It's a place where you can find confidence place where you can make memories. It is the place where we learn to love, respect, and care for one another. And the key to all of this, the key to a healthy family, is what we've learned in verse 18, be filled with the Spirit. That's the key. 
The wife submitting to the husband, the husband loving his wife as Christ loved his church and gave himself for her. Children obeying their parents, bringing them up, parents bringing them up in the discipline and instruction of the Lord. All these things flows from being filled with the Spirit. It's the key to everything. And a lot of the conflict and the, the problems faced in families today is simply because we're not filled with the Spirit. We are not allowing the Spirit to control our lives. We are putting back on the old man and we are not walking the design by design. We're not following God's design and going in actually opposite direction. That's why we experience so many problems and issues and things in family, conflict in family. Now I'll, 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 I'll limit it down to your close family, father, mother, children, okay? Not talking about those crazy family you also have, okay? We all have crazy family. You can just speak to anyone and their family is always worse than yours. Okay, it's always like that. But through the years and, and doing counseling and um, especially marital counseling, family counseling, I've done that also many times. I've come to the conclusion that the majority of our problems boils down to this. If we're not filled with the Spirit, it boils down to one thing, and that is self. Self. I, me, and myself. I do it my way. Families, and families where this problem is addressed, this is actually a sin. And how um, in the family has God designed it? That's where we learn to deny self, sometimes forced. To deny self. That's where we learn to put others' interest above our own interest. That's where we learn to live together. To love together. To go get along together. And without family, as God intended it to be, society will fall apart. There will be no morality. There will be no security, no stability. No caring for others, but that's just individualism, selfism, people just looking after their own interests. But God intended and designed family to put different people into one spot. And we need, and as I always say when I do premarital counseling, in marriage, God puts complete two different people together so that we can learn this dance. And we step on one another's toes a lot, but we need to learn to dance. Show me family members that are spirit-filled. Show me family members that obey the word of God, walk his design, and I will show you a happy family. I will show you a family that is full of praise, melody in their hearts to the Lord, family that is thankful, grateful, a fa family that has a spirit of submission. You need to submit to one another. We spoke about that. Now, the greatest threat to God's design for family is individualism. It is selfism. I know it's a new term probably coined not many years ago by, and I've watched the whole thing, selfism by Dave Hunt. The greatest fight that you will ever have in your family is not with your spouse, is not with your children. The greatest fight you will ever have is with yourself. You are your greatest enemy. And the only way to defeat self and deny self and follow and, and, and is to follow Christ, to count others more significant than yourself, to submit to one another, to follow God's design, to walk by God's design. That's how you overcome sin and the selfishness in your life. Now listen, it's not difficult to get along 
with someone who is full of praise and thanksgiving. It's not difficult to get along with someone who's always willing to put others above himself. There's only one way you can cultivate healthy and good relationships in your life with anyone, I would say. It's when you're filled with the Spirit of God, when you are walking by design, you're not fulfilling your own needs, but you're looking to fulfill the other's needs. The only way. It's the only way how healthy relationships work. Now, naturally, we don't do it that way. Naturally, we're full of complaint and murmur and us Naturally, we want to go to, to have our own way. This is why we need to be filled with the Spirit because we can only do this if we are controlled by the Spirit of God, if the Spirit works in us and through us and enables us to do this. Can you see why? That being spiritful is necessary for good family, for healthy relationships. Because in our own sinful flesh, we don't do it. But we need the Spirit of God. Be honest. Who wants to live in a world where everyone lives just for themselves? And that's where we are heading towards, this liberal social movement. People want to live for themselves. They want to make their own choices. They don't care about the choices that affects everyone around them. It's about them. It's about me, my, um, I and myself. And the un I don't want to live in a world that is like, like that, where people just care about themselves. Who wants to be married to someone who just cares about themselves? Who want to use you for their own interests, for their own needs. I don't want to, but you know what that means? It means we need to be filled with the Spirit. That's what it means. If I'm that person who's full of myself, not full of praise and, and always complaining, always murmuring, always want my own way, why would I want to expect others to, to put up with me? And ask yourself that question this morning. Be honest with yourself. Your greatest enemy is not the people you live with in the family. Your greatest enemy is you. I want to see the reaction. I'm looking. Watching you. If you look at the world today, what do you see? In fact, I don't have a scripture on here. Paul says, and I think it's in Timothy 3. Not sure. The last days, people will be lovers of themselves. People are self centered. If I look at the world, relationships are built in, on performance. And I speak a lot about that in premarital counseling, a performance based relationship that says, I will stay with you. As long as you give me what I want. As long as um, you perform. As, as long as you fulfill my needs. As long as you don't irritate me too, uh, too much. The greatest disease of 2022 is not COVID-19. It is selfism. That's the greatest disease. Individualism. I want my rights. Children wants their rights. You all hear it all over the place. Children have rights. Huh? Sorry, mate. But um, if you live under my roof, you have no rights. <laughs> if you want your rights, there, there's the door. Okay, I'm just joking. But really, we live in a world where self has become such a disease. But if you are a child of God, can I just give you the bad news? Well, it's actually good news. You gave up your rights. You don't have rights anymore. You gave it to God. You became a servant of Christ. You denied yourself. If you're a follower of Jesus, it's not what you want. It's what he wants for your life. It's about his design. It's about following and walking by God's design. His design for marriage. His design for family. His design only when you're following God's design. It's when relationships become meaningful. 
Selfism, individualism will only lead to lo loneliness and isolation. I mean, just it's simple fact. Think about it. If you really want freedom and individualism, you're welcome to go stay on a mountain in a cabin by your own, by yourself, and, and enjoy life. But you know what? You're going to find one thing very soon is you're alone. I've heard so many families that emigrated, people emigrated to some other country. The one, they might have a better life. They might have a better income. It might be different, better circumstances than South Africa. But I've heard that one thing they miss the most, and that's family. It's the one reason why they will come back. It's because of family. Family is everything. From our scripture then today, there are two essential elements to family. First one is marriage. We spoke about that last week, marriage. The husband, the wife actually did a, a marriage yesterday for the first time in two years for the marriage. And I, I enjoyed it so much because I just, I don't care what people say, I just give them the word. <laughs> but marriage as God designed it. And then secondly, the second element of family is parenthood. But what is the purpose of these two things? What is the purpose of marriage? What is the purpose of parenthood? Why did God design it like that? What is the purpose of that? Of family? And that's what I want to focus this morning. Three points. I'm a good Baptist. Three points. What is the purpose of family? Number one is to display the character of God. The purpose of family is to display the character of God. If we look at marriage, verse 22 says, Wives, submit to your husbands as to the Lord. We spoke about that. Verse 30, 23, Husbands, love your wives as Christ is head, uh, be, uh, is head of the wife, as Christ is head of the church. Husband is the savior of the wife, um, as Christ is savior of the church. Verse 25, we, Christ gave himself for the church. Husbands give themselves for their wives. Verse 33, husbands loves their, love their wives. Wives respect their husbands. All of this is called in verse 32 as a mystery and it's profound. Why? Because marriage displays the relationship between Christ and his church. Between Christ's devotion to his church is displayed by the husband's devotion to his wife and the submission of the church to Christ is displayed by the wife submitting to her husband. The relationship between parents and children displays the tenderness, displays the patience of, um, of God towards his children. These two relationships, marriage, parenthood, displays the character of God. And when we are spirit-filled, we, we will display the fruit of the Spirit. We will reflect God's character. Galatians 5, 22. For the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control. Against such things there is no law. Can you imagine... A family without any of these? I don't want to be a part of that family. When the kids are driving you crazy, but you show patience and kindness. What are you doing, parents? You are displaying the character of God. When your wife is difficult, sorry, mama. And unfriendly. But you show love and, thing and gentleness towards her. What are you doing, husband? You are displaying the character of God. When your husband is unloving and uninvolved, stonewalling, doesn't talk, doesn't give attention, but you, wife, still show goodness. You show faithfulness to him. What are you doing? You're displaying the character of God. That's what marriage is created for. That's what family is created for. 
The purpose of the relationship between a husband and a wife is to display the devotion of Christ to his church. Parenthood, the relationship between the parents and the children, displays the tenderness and the patience towards the children as God is tender and patient towards us. And they display the character of God. Now, family is a safe place. It should be a safe place where children can experience the love of God through parents. It is here where they also learn how to love other people. Now, if this relationship is broken, father, mother, children, parents, it will cause problems. A lot of problems. It will create a wrong perception of who God is. And we've seen this so many times in counseling. A father that abuses his children and, and is very aggressive the children have a perception of a father in heaven who's always angry and always aggressive and always wants to judge. We see that in counseling. But when we act in ways that don't deserve love, let's be honest, we don't deserve it. We don't deserve peace. We don't deserve kindness, patience, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self. When we act in those ways that we don't deserve these things, and our spouse or our children gives us these things, they are spirit-led. You know what that does? We learn about grace. We learn what grace is. It's about grace. We all fall, fail so miserably over and over. And, but believe me, even if you feel like you are placed in the wrong family, who feels that way? You've been born, you've been switched somewhere in the hospital. If you feel like you're in the wrong family and everyone is driving you nuts, remember that God placed you there and he put you in that specific family for your own good. God gave you the people for your own good. So that's the first point. The purpose of family is to display the character of God. Secondly, the purpose of family is to glorify God. To glorify God. I want to take you to Malachi. Chapter 2. Should be the answer. Malachi chapter 2 verse 13 says, And this second thing you do, you cover the Lord's altar with tears, with weeping and groaning, because he no longer regards the offering or accept it, um, it with favor from your hand. But you say, why does he not? I don't want to go into much detail, but why does God not accept your offering? Because the Lord has witnessed between you and the wife of your youth to whom you have been faithless, though she is your companion and your wife by covenant. Now I preach on, on every marriage that marriage is a covenant. It's a covenant. Now when he talks about faithless, he's not talking about the, the husband walking around. He's not talking about that. He's talking about a husband not fulfilling his role as the husband is faithless verse 15 did he not make them one with a portion of the spirit in the union and what was the one god seeking why did god seek one why did god seek marriage godly offspring so guard yourselves in your spirit and let none of you be faithless to the wife of your youth. For the man who does not love his wife but divorces her, says the Lord, the God of Israel covers his garment with violence, says the Lord of hosts. So guard yourselves in your spirit and do not be faithless. Now, I want to just point out from this text. According to this text, why did God create marriage? Why did he make man, woman, one plus one equals 
One. Lost James Money. Who that did? I see him. One plus one is one. Why did God make one man, one with a portion of his spirit in the union? For the reason, verse 15 says, and that, what was the one God seeking? A godly offspring. Godly offspring. So the purpose of marriage is to have a godly offspring. The purpose of family. You see, family is the place that God designed where you learn to live godly lives. That's the place where you learn. It is the place where you learn to glorify God with your life and live for Him. God brings a man and a woman together in flesh and spirit so that they may have children that love the Lord and seek to glorify Him. Yes, glorifying God is, is the purpose of every individual, of every person. God created us for His glory. That's our vision. One of the first one, our vision is upwards so that our lives glorify God. Yes, God made us this way, but where do we learn this? Where do we cultivate a life that glorifies God? Where does this all happen? Family. Yes, you can go to church. You can send your kids to Sunday school and to youth groups to learn about God and learn how to live and serve Him. It's all good, but God's design is that all of this should take place in the home. We've seen over the years so many times where parents would just drop off their kids at Sunday school and they go home. Because they want to see probably their conscience. They want to silence their conscience. They've, they've done their part. I've seen it. 23, 22 years of ministry. I've seen it over and over. Afterwards. But where does the training, godly training happen? It happens in the home. It happens in the home. It is there, but God, God's design is that, they, that we will learn to love one another as God loves us. It is, the, uh, it is there that parents should model that example for their children, how to live for God. Lives that glorify Him. Now, one of the reasons, and I, I'm just speculating, but I do think I'm right. One of the reasons why Many children leave the church and leave Christianity when they leave the home. It's because they grew up in a home where the parents were only Sunday Christians. I call them submarine Christians. Have you heard about them? They come up Sunday, they go down Monday. And then you see only them again on Sunday. And unfortunately, that's, I, think, I think that's the reason why so many children that grew up in a Christian home will leave Christianity and the church because their parents were different on a Sunday, but on Monday, they're completely different. And they saw the hypocrisy and they saw what's going on. They say, no, this is fake. And we are the reason why. Parents are to model what it looks like to glorify God. Every day of the week. Parents are to model to their children and teach them and instruct them in the ways of God so that when they grow up, they will not depart from it. Children are to, to see their parents worshiping God, praying together, and glorifying God together. So the first purpose of family is to display God's character. The second is to glorify God. The third, there's probably many purposes, but I'm, the third one I've got here is the purpose of family is to advance the gospel. To advance the gospel. Now I'm going to go back all the way to, to Deuteronomy verse chapter 6. And we actually spoke in our Bible study 
about this and I, someone asked me a question about love the Lord your God and I said this is actually an Old Testament commandment. It's not a New Testament thing. It's an old. It's since the beginning. And the commandments, Ten Commandments is just an extension and an explanation of these commandments. But let's go to Deuteronomy 6 verse 4 where it says, Hear, O Israel, the Lord your, our God, the Lord is one. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your might. And these words that I command you today shall be on your heart. Verse 7. You shall teach them diligently to your children. You shall, and shall talk on of them when you sit in your house, when you walk by the way, when you lie down, and when you rise. You shall blind them as a sign to, on your hand, and they shall be as for, uh, frontless between your eyes. You shall write them on the doorposts of your house and on your gates. Hear God clearly. God clearly tells us what the purpose of family is in this, part, in, in this portion of Scripture. To spread the good news from one generation to the next generation. Family is the means by which we can reach out to others and the community, to neighborhood. We have the opportunity to live out the gospel in our daily lives and show the world what it looks like when we glorify God and live for Him. See, after the fall in Genesis 3, families were marred by sin. The world today testifies of that, testifies of sin that destroys families, bro broken families, family. And let me just say this, family is not the problem. Oh, but pastor, you don't know my family. No, family is not the problem. Sin is the problem. God created family. Can I add on to that? Marriage is not the problem. Sin is the problem. God created marriage. He, in, he, he made marriage. It's a holy um, um, union between two people. But we love to blame the marriage. It's a third party. We love to blame, blame family and other people, but we never look to self as the problem. After the fall, we see this. We see in the world, we live in a world that families are destroyed. Sin, sin is the problem. Sin disfigured the design of God for family. But God changes families and they become a place where restoration can take place and where His name is glorified. Families can be one of the most effective instruments in God's hand to win the world for Christ. It's through families that we show the world what it means to live for God and follow Him. As we love the Lord with all our heart, with mind and soul and strength, and we pass this on from one generation to the next, to our children, we will be a testimony to the world of what kind of life is possible if we live a, centered, a life centered around Christ. We will show the world. You see, the presence of God has not come into your home to bless you. So that you, the presence of God is in our home so that we can bless the world. We must model Christ, His love, His forgiveness. Now think about this. We read in 1 Timothy 3 verse 2, we read about the elders, the church leaders that must be hospitable. Is that the right word? Hos hospitality. Must be hospitable. Hebrews 13 verse 2 says that we must show hospitality to strangers. Romans 12, 13 says we must contribute to the needs of the saints and seek to show hospitality. Uh, there's a word that pops up every time, hospitality. Okay? And that's actually a ministry. There's a ministry of hospitality. Did you know that in the Bible? Now, how do we do this? How do we show 
hospitality towards strangers, towards the saints, towards other people? How do we do this? We do this by opening our homes to others. Jesus and his disciples were dependent on people who opened their homes for them. Maria, Martha, their home was open for Jesus. The early church, where, where did they meet? Did they have church buildings? No, they met in homes. And in this way, they reached the neighborhood. They reached the community. And family should be that place, should be that home where we can show hospitality to strangers, to saints, to our neighborhood, so that we can advance the gospel. So that we can bless others. Or are we such so individualistic and so cut off from everyone? We just want to be in my little home. We God made families to be an open door for, for the needs of others. Jesus, um, well, I said that also family is not just a place, a home where we go to eat, sleep and watch TV. No, she is still. Family is more than that. Family is where we go together to touch other people's lives. And it, it's not just where you live, your home. It's where you go as a family. Now, I've read the story. I want to share it with you before I close. Rodney Buchanan tells the story about one church family where they were eating out. And as the wife was in the habit of doing this, she said to the waitress, who had just delivered their food to the table, she said, we're going to pray together now. Is there something that we can pray for you? Have you done that before? Yes, we pray for our food, but have you done that? Is there something we can pray for you? So, so this, this girl, this waitress, was so stunned and said, does it look so bad? She was referring to herself. Can you see it on my face? And she just became so emotional, walked away. And when she came back, she said, this has been the worst day of my life. My grandfather died. Then I just found out my boyfriend was cheating on me the whole time we've been going together. And it's so wonderful to know that there are people still out there who care. So this is just a simple act of Christian love that you as a family can give minister and bring someone closer to God. Family is created to glorify God, but also to advance the gospel. And let's, let's close. I want to ask you as church family, let's walk the design. Let's walk by design. Let's follow God's design for family. It's for your own good. It's for the health of your own family and your family. Let's follow God's design for marriage and for, for, for parenthood. I don't care what the world outside they, they says, even if they censor me on YouTube and when I say it. But there's only one design and it's God's design. Let's do that. God has a plan for, for family, but can I say it? God has a plan for your family. Do you believe that? God has a plan for your family. May our families display the character of God as we are spiritual. May God be glorified in our families. And may our family be a vehicle through which God can advance his kingdom through the gospel. I want to do something different this morning. I want to suggest that the families that are here represented today, some of you might be not Alone, yeah, I see. Well, sorry, Colleen Donovan is online. But maybe join up with someone else who's also single. Let our families just quickly come together. And let's just pray for our families. And pray this. God, may we display your character. May we glorify you. 
and use us as a family to make a difference in this world. Can we pray that? And then we bless one another. Can we do that? If you're alone, find someone who's alone. <laughs> and then pray for them. Quickly, two minutes. For those online, we want to also come together as family at home. Pray for one another. I'm going to give two or three, five minutes. I'm going to join quickly up with my family and I'll be back in two minutes. Thank you. Let's pray together. Father, we thank you this morning that we can, as a broken vessel, just put our lives into your hands. And Lord, we acknowledge that, that it's not, it's many times, so many times we make mistakes and um, that we are actually fighting against ourselves when it comes to family. I pray this morning that you will restore broken families, that you will help us to heal broken hearts. Help us, Lord, to live lives that glorify you, and display your character in our lives, and make a difference in the world. I pray that you'll bless each family represented. For those who are online, that you'll bless each family. We're so grateful that you've given us the people that we have to endure every day and have patience for and, to, and show tenderness, but Lord, it's all for our own good so that we can understand the grace of God, so that we can learn to love one another as you love us, even though we are sin um, sinning and doing wrong things, that you still love us and you forgive us. And we're thankful for that in Jesus' name. I pray that you bless us and that you will be with each family. In Jesus' name, amen. <laughs> We're going to sing a last song, and then after that, there will be coffee. And may God bless you. I was saying some to someone, probably some of you noticed, there's a little bit of a difference going on there outside. I don't know who noticed something different. <laughs> so, basically, it's, it's a lot of painting that needs to happen. We can employ maybe one or two guys to paint for us. 
But I want to invite you, if you've got a day off or you want to work on a Saturday and paint maybe one sheet or one pole, tell me. Yeah, there's 20 poles. If we have 20 people, paint one pole, we've got all poles painted in 10 minutes. Or the sheets might take a bit longer, need 19 sheets, then we can do that. I'm just suggesting. So if you want to jump in and you've got a day off, you want to do that, please let me know. Um, but it's all coming nicely. And we're grateful for, for those who contributed financially. We still have a lot to go, but we'll, we will plan ahead from here how we're going to do that. Amen? Let's stand and let's sing a last song. I'm going to sing Shout, Hosanna. That's Taylor's favorite song. Ask me every Sunday. I'm going to sing that. The things are open wide, we see. see the life has done, we see. The over the we wash it Amen. God bless. Have some coffee.
Online, God bless you.